Well, good morning, everybody, and good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our Youth and Children's Day service. It's another strange one this year, isn't it? I don't know if you guys remember last year, it was my first Youth and Children's Day with you, and we were all online, so you were watching this at home. This year, some of us are in the building together, and next year, hopefully, we'll all be in the building together. I want to say a special welcome to all of you guys and to all the boys and girls and young people joining us from home this morning. There are a couple of particular groups I want to say a special hello to, and maybe you could help me. The first is our Duke of Edders, okay? So we've got three groups of, from church who are out today doing their Duke of Edinburgh expedition. You should see their faces on the screen here. So we want to say a special hello to them. They're probably not watching live now, although I think they were able to watch the Euros on their phone at some point, but um, they'll maybe catch up with this later. And another very special hello this morning. Um, goes to Lena, who is in Manchester with her family for a few weeks. And Lena, if you're watching this morning, we want to send you our love to tell you that we're thinking about you, and we're glad that you're able to join with us online this morning. Well, today, our theme, as you'll see, is our captain in the storm. And we're going to be thinking about how Jesus is with us in all the storms of life. I don't know, I, we've been doing quite a few baptisms recently. Who's been at one of those baptisms? Can you put your hand up? We've got a couple of people in the house, yeah. And at the baptism, one of the things we love to do as a church family is to give you guys a children's Bible. And one of my favorite children's Bibles is the Jesus Storybook Bible. Who has that book at home? Oh, lots of hands going up. So you'll be able to tell me. There's a sentence on the front of that where it says, every sentence whispers his name. Now, I want to share with you some words from the Old Testament that I think whisper this person's name, and we'll see if you can tell me who that is. So have a look here. He stilled the storm to a whisper. They were glad when it grew calm. He guided them to the desired haven. That means a safe place. Who do you think that's talking about? Yeah? God, Jesus, that's right. Every story whispers his name. And this story whispers Jesus' name because only our creator God could calm the storms. And we're going to sing about that God now with our first song. Let's all stand and sing together, Creator God. You put the stars in outer space. Freckles on my face And all the fish that swim And all the birds that fly Were made from your incredible imagination Creator God We're singing to the Creator God Of all the world Creator God We celebrate you We celebrate you that grows and all the leaves that fall are part of your amazing plan for this creation creator god we're singing to the creator god of all the world creator god we celebrate you we celebrate you
now I'm going to invite the Maguires to come up and lead us in our prayers. So we've got Ben, Caleb, and Noah. Boys, do you want to come on up here? Let's pray it together. Dear God, thank you that we can sing songs together and praise you. Thank you for our friends and families. Sorry for the times that we do things that um, that we need to be sad. Please help us to look after each other. Help us to talk to our friends about you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you for Kirkpatrick Memorial Church. Sorry for the times that we ignore you and make our own decisions instead of asking for your help. Please help us to learn more about you and to know you more. Please help the people in our church community who are sick. We pray for Lena, who is getting special medicine in England at the moment. Help her to get better. We miss BB in Sunday Club and all our normal youth activities. We miss seeing all our friends at church. We pray these organizations will be able to start safely again in September. Help our leaders to prepare for this. And finally, we pray that you will help us to get the right minister for our church. Amen. Boys, thank you so much. screen a familiar logo who's been watching Sunday Club TV over the last while yeah okay well we're gonna have a bit of fun now we're gonna have a Sunday Club end of season quiz that was perfectly timed there guys at the back well done um, now you'll you'll probably have noticed on your pews this morning there's a really strange looking shape now any grown-ups who are here who don't have this, I apologize. This is just for the boys and girls, because we wouldn't want any, any cheating really going on with grown-ups who might know the right answers. Um, so boys and girls, these are for you to use. And um, Because we can't come up and be together and, and we have to socially distance, we're going to use this to have an interactive quiz. And I'm going to explain to you now how this is going to work. In a moment, we're going to have a, a special celebrity guest who's going to come out and ask us some questions. And there are going to be multiple choice answers. So you'll get to choose A, B, C, or D. And if you look at your page, you'll probably see that there are letters around the sides. Do you see that? A, B, C, or D. All right? And all you have to do to answer is to choose the letter you want to answer. So if I'm answering D, D would be at the top. And just hold up your page like this for me to see. And I'm going to use my phone to scan your answers. This sounds very complicated, doesn't it? Let's hope it works. We have tested it. Now, the really important thing is don't let your fingers cover the black spaces. If they do, it won't pick it up. So you hold it like this. And people up in the gallery, you have an extra big one. So hopefully my phone will pick it up. And hold it up nice and high for me, OK? We've got five questions. Think carefully about your answer. You only get one go at answering. And when you've decided, hold up your sheet, and I will scan your answer. Is that clear? Now, I wonder, can you guess who our special celebrity guest might be? Maybe you're really excited. You're hoping it's going to be a famous footballer or something. Well, we've even better. It's the one, the only. Hello! News. Let's give her a round of applause. gorgeous faces. So lovely to see you. Well, are you all ready for your quiz? I hope you've all been listening very carefully. Are you ready? Can't hear you. Are you ready? Yes, there we go. Okay, so question number one. This year on KMPC Brilliant, you're fabulous. We have journeyed through all the books of the Bible, but can you tell me how many books of the Bible there are? Are there A, 2, B, 32, C, 24, 
or D, 66? Okay, let's see here. Oh. Oh. The technology has frozen. Hold on. <laughs> we knew this would happen. Here we go. Let's try this again. Ah, it's working. Okay, here we go. Great. Hold up your answers for me. I think I've gotten everybody here. You'll see your name popping up on the screen to show that you've answered. A few people at the back. I think that's everybody. Apologies to anybody we haven't picked up. Okay, Gloria? Okay, oh, are we ready? Are oh, here we go. Would you like to see the... So here's how you answered C and D. And the correct answer is... Oh, well done, 100%. Well right. done, you're all so clever. Fantastic, okay. Brilliant, full <laughs> marks all round, okay. So, question two, are you ready? Question two. After God's people were rescued from Egypt, they made some bad decisions and ended up spending time in the desert. For how long did they wander in the wilderness? 40 minutes, 40 hours, 40 days and nights, or 40 years? Hold oh, those nice and high. Excellent. Oh, it's looking good. Good. Looking good. I think I've got everybody. Fantastic. There. Any others? Hello up there. I okay. Think, I think that's everyone. I think that's yeah. us. Yep. Okay. We'll have a look at the graph here, see how you voted. There we go. Oh, a bit of disagreement this time, Gloria. So Here between we go. C and D, and the answer is? 40 years. That's a long time, isn't it? Okay, shall we see how many of you got it right? Uh, I Ooh. think most people got it right. I'm not sure why it didn't bring up the percentage that time. <laughs> we'll just move on. Fantastic, <laughs> you're doing well. Okay, question number three. This question is about someone else who spent a lot of time in the wilderness. In the Gospels, we learn that John the Baptist lived in the desert. What did he like to eat? Manna and quail, locusts and wild honey, fish and chips, or bread and cheese? What do you think? Oh, it's looking good again. <gasps> You've all been listening so well. Good. Okay. okay. Well done, everybody. I think that's okay. everyone. And the answer is... Lucas and Wild Honey. I think we maybe got everyone to get Everybody got, that, got right. that right. Well done. Well done, everyone. Okay, question four. Jesus had 12 disciples. Which one of the following was not one of the 12? Thaddeus, Bartholomew... Philip or Marcus? I think that's it. Okay. Oh, looking great again. Oh. You're all so clever. Okay, I think that's everybody. Okay, and the answer is Marcus. I think everyone got that one right. Pretty well much, done, yeah. everyone. Okay, are you ready for the last one? Okay, here we go. In one of our most recent episodes of SCTV, we learned about the Apostle Paul, who went on lots of exciting journeys to tell people about Jesus. Which book of the Bible records all the stories of Paul's adventures? Acts of the Apostles, Paul's letter to the Romans, the Gospel of Mark, or the amazing adventures of Paul? Go for it. Okay. I think that's... Get up there at the top. Oh, I think that's everybody. Okay, and the answer is... Acts of the Apostles. Well done, everyone. 
I think everyone got that right. Almost. Well done. Yeah. Well done, everyone. That's fantastic. Give yourselves a clap. And let's give Gloria a big clap as well. Say thank, thank you. you, Gloria. She has a busy schedule. We're delighted she's here. Well, boys and girls, you've obviously been paying really good attention at SCTV all this year, so well done. Um, that little quiz reminded us of the big story that we find in the Bible, didn't it? You've journeyed through all those 66 books this year, which is amazing. We're going to sing about that now. We're going to sing about how throughout that big story of history, God is there with us. Let's stand and sing together our next song, All Through History. Noah built the most enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Noah lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. comes to me David fought Goliath in his den found him from the safety once again the Lord was good the Lord was strong and Daniel lived his life for him Esther broke him boldly to the king a very risky thing. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Esther lived her life for him. comes to me. Jesus died to take away our sin, so we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through same when it comes to me. Thank you, oh thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. Boys and girls, I love learning new words, okay? I used to be an English teacher, so maybe that makes sense to you. I love learning new words. And I love that Daniel's now at the age where he's learning new words every day, and Esther's learning new words as she reads, and we like to talk about those new words together. I learned two really fun new words recently, and I want to share them with you. I wonder if you can guess what these words might mean. Here's the first one. It's a noun, okay? I mean, it's a person, place, or a thing. A cow quaker. A cow quaker. Any ideas what that could be? A cow quaker. The second word might give you a clue because it means the same thing, but it's maybe a little more obvious as to what it's about. It's another noun, another thing. 
It's called a thunder plunk. It's not a great word. It's a fun word to say. Do you want to say it with me? If I count to three, would you shout out thunder plunk? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, brilliant. You're going to remember that word now. Now, this word might help you to guess what both these words might mean. Anybody want to put their hand up and shout out a guess for me? There's a wee hand up at the back there, but Dad's saying, no, we're not sure about that. Anybody got any ideas? A thunder plunk. It's quite an onomatopoeic word. That means a word that sounds like it's meaning. There's the English teacher and me coming out again. Well, let me tell you. It means a sudden downpour of rain. Okay? And actually, this word, a cow quaker, is very specific. It's about rain in May when the cows go out to the field, and it can be so strong and heavy that it makes the cows quake. We had some of that this May, didn't we? We definitely had a fair few thunder plunks. The story we're going to be thinking about in church today is about a th thunder plunk. It's a story about how Jesus and his disciples got caught in a sudden burst of rain. In fact, it was worse than that. They got caught in a storm. And worse still, they were in a tiny little boat when it happened. Now, in a minute, we're going to hear that story. Um, I think it's Reuben's going to come and read to us. Or, sorry, Anna. Reuben's in the next service. Anna's going to read to us. But before we do that, when I was reading stories in my classroom, I used to love to use our imaginations to set the scene, to get us ready to hear the story. And because this story's about rain, I thought you might join with me as we create a bit of an atmosphere for this story, okay? We're going to recreate the sound of a storm. So I want you to listen carefully to my instructions and follow what I do. And let's see together if we can create the feeling of what it must have been like to be caught in that thunder plunk. Are you with me? Now, there are only half of us in church today. We're not full. So you're going to have to work twice as hard with me. So what I want you to do is everybody, whatever your age in the church, I want you to start rubbing your hands like this. That's the very... This is a gradual buildup of rain, okay? And the boys and girls, keep rubbing your hands as hard as you can. And adults, can you all start clicking your fingers for me? Now, do you hear the rain starting to get heavier? Yeah? Now, boys and girls, start tapping your knees like this. It's getting heavier again. And here comes the thunder punk. Can you stamp your feet really loudly for me? Listen to that thunder. Wow. Now, stop tapping your feet and start doing this again. Okay, adults keep clicking, and boys and girls start rubbing their hands. Okay, adults stop clicking. Look at that. We're through the thunder plunk. And now it's time for Anna to come and read to us from the Gospel of Luke. Anna, thank you. Luke 8, 22 to 25. One day Jesus and his disciples got in a boat. Let's cross the lake, he said, and off they went. It was smooth sailing and he fell asleep. A terrific storm came up suddenly on the lake. Water poured in and they were about to capsize. They woke Jesus. Master, master, we're going to drown. Getting to his feet, he told the wind, silence, and the waves quiet down. They did it. They became smooth as glass. Then he said to his disciples, Can, why can't you trust me? They were in absolute awe, staggered and stammering. Who is this anyway? He calls out to the winds and the sea, and they do what he tells them. Thank you, Anna. Very well read. Thank you for doing that for us. Now, boys and girls, if you were listening carefully to that, there's something very strange about that reading. Jesus behaves in a very strange way. So let me explain again. The disciples and Jesus are out on a boat. They're on this little boat in the Sea of Galilee, and suddenly out of nowhere, this storm comes upon them. And the disciples are all freaking out. They think they're going to drown. They're shouting, and they're screaming, and they're, they're running about the boat, trying to think about what are they going to do. What's Jesus doing all that time? Did anybody notice? Yeah. He was sleeping. He had his head on a pillow fast asleep. Now, isn't that a really strange thing to do? They're out on a stormy sea. The disciples are worried about the boat sinking, and Jesus is fast asleep. Now that got me thinking, what does that tell us about Jesus? Why would he be asleep in the boat when everybody else was panicking? Well, the first thing it tells us is something that Billy talked to us about a couple of weeks ago. It reminds us that Jesus got tired like we did. 
If we read the story before that, Jesus had been talking to lots of people. He'd been really busy. And in the boat, he's getting a little rest and he goes to sleep. But the second really important thing is he doesn't waken up because Jesus isn't afraid of the storm. He's not concerned about it. And when the disciples called him for help and he wakens up, Jesus, we see why he isn't afraid, why he isn't concerned. What did he do, boys and girls? He told the waves to be still. He told the storm to stop, and it did. Now, we read that story, and it's hard for us to imagine what an amazing thing that must have been to witness. For those disciples to see this raging storm, and then like that, for it to stop. So I want you to help me again as we try to imagine what this must have been like. We're going to have another go, since you did it so well. We're going to have another go at creating our storm. But this time, I want you just to start, when I count to three, start making as much noise, stamping your feet and clapping your hands as possible, because it's a really sudden storm. And if we've got Peter on the drums, maybe, Peter, you could you know, add to that effect with a wee drum roll there. And then I'm going to say, stop, be still, and just like that, I want you to be super quiet. Do you think you can do that for me? And we'll see if we can imagine what it must have been like for those disciples. So I'll count to three, make as much noise as you can, and then when I say stop, be still, we be as quiet as we can. One, two, three. Stop, be still. And you see the calm after a big noise like that. Jesus was able to calm the storm. I don't know about you, but I've never been caught in a storm like that. I've been in lots of thunder plunks, and they're not fun. They can be scary. They can make us worried about what might happen. And they can also be frustrating because they stop us doing things. Now, as I was reading this story, it made me think back on the year we've all had together. It feels like we've been caught in a big thunder plunk, doesn't it? Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, you guys weren't going to school for a bit. And you've had lots of disruption this last year. And there have been lots of things that have worried you. I'm sure some people in school have been worried about exams. Some of you might be worried about going to a next school yes, next year. There are lots of things that worry us. And it can feel like there is a storm going on inside us. Well, the message I have for you this morning from this story in Luke's gospel is that no matter how stormy it is, we don't need to be afraid because Jesus is in the boat with us. And Jesus isn't sleeping. Jesus is awake. He's with you. He knows what you're going through and what you're dealing with. And he is our captain in the storm. In a moment, we're going to sing one of your favorite songs I know. It's one of our favorites in our house, My Lighthouse. Do you know that song? Yeah. Who sings that song in school, maybe? And we definitely sing it in Sunday club from time to time. It's a great song. Maybe you like it because it's got a good tune and you, you like to sing along, and it's a fun one to sing. I wonder, do you ever listen to the words? Because to today, as we sing it, I want you to listen to those words, because the words of this song remind us of what this story is about, that all through the storms, no matter what happens in our lives, even as we grow up and we meet lots of thunderplunks on the way, Jesus is with us in the boat. He's our captain in the storm, and how does the song put it? He will lead us safe to shore. Shall we sing that song together now? And let's say thank you to God that he's with us in the boat as we sing. my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh, you are the peace in my 
troubled thing. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Well, as we come to our, our time of prayer in a moment, before we do that, we're going to hear from some of our young people in church. As I said, this has been a strange year for you. It's also been a year where there's been some change. So some of our P7s will be moving into a new school in September. And well, all of you, not some of you. And you'll also be moving from Sunday club into Bible class, isn't that right? And we also have some others in our congregation too, our year 14s are not starting a new school, they're leaving big school and going on to other things. So we're gonna hear from both those groups now, our P7s and our year 14s. First of all, we've got a little video that our P7s have made for us, just lasts a minute, and then Dan's going to come up and chat to one of our year 14s, and then Dan will lead us in our prayers together. Looking forward to the moment from Skill. I'm looking forward to GB Extra. I'm looking forward to having the weekend to life. I'm looking forward to the company section of the I'm looking forward to meeting a new class and getting the bus to school. isn't even on yet, so um, morning, how's things? Uh, as Paul said, in a couple minutes, uh, I'm going to pray for um, our P7s we've just seen and for our year 14s. I'm going to invite Holly up. Uh, Holly is one of your year 14s, and this is the time of year when we sadly say goodbye uh, to the guys leaving school. So there's uh, six of them. I'll give you that. Um, I don't know if there's a slide for the six, it may, may or may not come up, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the, the six are Holly, who we've got up here uh, this morning, Grace Armstrong, Sophia Meldrum, Lewis Drain, Noah Weston, and Rhiannon Dowie, and I'm glad I got all six, and up, there they are there. So, um, Holly's going to give us a bit of an insight as to kind of what this couple, last couple of years has been like for young people uh, through the pandemic and, and what she's looking forward to. So, Holly, thanks very much, uh, first of all, for coming up. Um, can you give us an idea about 
sort of what the last couple of years have looked like and some of the challenges that um, you guys have had to face? Yeah, so every age group has missed out on something over this past year, but for us, um, that we're at the stage where we get a bit more freedom, so we missed out on getting our driving tests and taking a bit more responsibility and skill. So at times that's been really disappointing. No, I'm sure it's been tough. Uh, I mean, has there been any, on the flip side, has, has there been any positives of, from lockdown in the last year? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, having, spending time with my family and having my sisters home from uni, although sometimes that seems like a bit of a challenge. Great. Um, and uh, so we're looking forward to uni then. So what, what are your plans for next year? So hopefully in September, I'll be starting Stram Millis um, for primary teaching. Brilliant. And, and how can we be praying for you then through that and through everything else? Yeah, so just as we all prepare to move on to the next stage, that we'd settle in and make good friends and that we'd have opportunities to share our faith. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I'll turn that off before we get some more uh, crackling, but I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. And um, um, we're now going to pray for young people. Let's pray. Dear God, as we come now in prayer, we are thankful that you're a God who loves us and listens to us. And we now bring before you uh, all the children and young people here at Kirkpatrick. In a year that's been so tough uh, for many of us, we're especially aware of the impact of the pandemic on our young folk. School has been disrupted, social interaction limited, and youth organizations canceled. But thank you that in the midst of this, you remain steadfast. And we pray that all our children and young people, and indeed all the grown-ups, will know this truth and continue to grow in love and knowledge of you. We look forward to the coming months when we hope and pray that restrictions will lift and we can meet together as normal. We're really excited by the prospect of our organization restarting in September and we look forward to the day when we can gather together as one big intergenerational church family on a Sunday morning. We really do pray you'd make this possible and bring an end to this pandemic. As we think of the next few months, we pray for all the leaders of our youth and children's organizations we pray that you will give them rest and spiritual renewal over the summer break. And we pray that you give them wisdom and guidance as they seek to plan and pray for a restart. We pray too for the youth strategy group, for our elders, Philip and Rosie, looking after that, as they collectively seek your will in shaping the various ministries of Kirkpatrick, and also for the project restart team as they help us to get going again. We think too of all the children and young people in our wider parish. May help us uh, as we seek to reach out to them and their families with the good news of Jesus. We pray particularly for our Summer Ministries, Holy Bible Club and Converge. Finally, Father, we pray for all the young people and children looking forward to new chapters over the next few weeks and months as we've already seen. We pray for the P7s as they look forward to going to big school. We pray that they would know you're with them always, that they will settle in well at new schools and with new friends. We pray too for the year 10s as they leave Bible class and join the rest of the church family on Sunday mornings. We ask that, you would, um, that they would feel really welcome and part of the family and that they would mature in their faith and grow into godly young men and women who love you. And finally, we pray for the year 14s that we've just heard from. As many of them hope to go to uni in September, we pray that they will get the results they need. May they know that whatever happens, you're in control, that you love them. And when they keep you at the center of their lives at this formative stage, we pray for normality to return so they might get to study and meet other students face to face. We pray for all our children and young people. We pray that you protect them, nurture them, and hold them close to you always. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Um, I have a few announcements, boys and girls. You've been so great in this service. Thank you for being here and for taking part. Um, I've got quite a few announcements, but most of them are to do with you, so you listen carefully as well. Um, first of all, it's obviously not just Youth and Children's Day today. What other day is it? Have a look at my socks, which are very brightly colored, and say, have a dad-tastic day. What day is it today? Yeah, Father's Day. It's the day when we say thank you to, to the people in our lives, the dads, uncles, um, granddads, whoever, who are important to us. And you'll see on our, our church email that went out on Friday, we've got some resources, a couple of videos from Home for Good. So we're not able to play those on our playlist, uh, our YouTube, because they're on Vimeo. But do take time to have a look at those today. Um, some really great stuff there. Um, 
Today on our Youth and Children's Day, we want to say a big thank you to all of our youth leaders and everybody who's been helping out, especially in this strange year. I also want to remind you of something we keep plugging in the church email, which is that we're looking out for more leaders to volunteer next year. In particular, this morning, I've been asked just to highlight one ministry in particular, which is, um, I always get Converse and Converge mixed up as Converse. So Converse, as you'll know, is our ministry to secondary school aged children, our young people, on Friday nights. Um, it's headed up by Clive and Helen Woolsey. And they're looking for more people to join their team for the ministry to start again in September. Now, of course, this is a really important ministry for us. It's an example of our young people reaching out beyond our walls to invite their friends and their neighbors along to our church on a Friday night where they can have a bit of crack together and learn about Jesus as well. So if you want to be part of this ministry, um, have a chat with me or with Philip Gilpin or with Rosie Donaldson as well um, to register your interest. Special announcement for Sunday Clubbers. In your mum and dad's email today, they should be getting a voucher for you to spend at the Bookwell. So 10 pounds for each Sunday Clubber in your family to take to the Bookwell in the co next couple of weeks um, to get a gift from Kirkpatrick um, from us to you uh, on this Children's Day. So do make sure you get that. If you have any problems with that, if you haven't got it for whatever reason, contact me directly and I'll sort that out for you. Um, Boys and girls, you heard in the prayer there, if you were listening, we are planning exciting news to have a holiday Bible club this summer. And for our older kids as well, we've got Converge will be happening. I'm not going to say anything about that now. Keep an eye out looking in the church updates and the announcements from the front in the next few weeks, and you'll find out a bit more about that. But I just want to plant the seed and get you excited about the summer at Kirkpatrick. Um, I think that's everything from me. I thought I had more, but that's me, all out. Um, we're going to finish now um, with a song written by our very own Roger, who's playing the piano here. It's one you guys know well, because when I started with you, I saw that amazing mashup video that you did on YouTube. Do you remember? I even saw our Clark Session dancing in that video, if I remember right. So I know that you guys know some moves to this. So if you want to clap or dance along while we're singing, you'll be very welcome. You won't see me doing it, because I, I don't know the moves. But we're going to stand and sing this together as we finish, as we give thanks to, to God and to Jesus, our unexpected rescuer. Let's stand and sing. Do, 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 do. Unexpected rescuer. He's a long awaited conqueror. He's a baby born to be a king. He's a reason why we love to sing. He lived a life that shook the world. His death brought peace that can't be earned. Rose again so we could be adopted in God's family. His name is Jesus, Jesus, he came to rescue me. His name is Jesus, Jesus, he came to set us free. We want to stand proud, shout loud, serve him to the end. He's the unexpected rescuer, and he wants to be my friend. Serving to the 
be my friend. Do 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 Thank you, everybody. Let's just stay standing, actually, and we're going to say, you've been so good at taking part today. I want you to take part in this with me. For our benediction, the blessing we do at the end of the service, I've chosen a memory verse that you learned in Sunday Club. But to be really kind to you, the words are on the screen as well. So shall we all say this together um, as we finish our service? Let's say this blessing together from Romans. I need to check the words, guys. I didn't learn my memory verse too well. Here we go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen.